Hi there. I'm working on a 28 inch toddler doll. Um, yesterday I was going to attempt to record, however, because this is my first time working with uh, acrylic air dry paints, um, I was having a couple of issues. One of my issues was my paint was too thick, so I had to continuously thin it out. Um, I found if you keep some water handy, um, it helps to dip your sponge in it because I was having issues with, um, one, the paint was too thick and I was having a lot of unevenness. So um, right now this is at the stage where I have already put on three coats. I don't know if you can see the color contrast between the, the neck and the neck ring. Um, so I'm going to at least ex uh, this demonstrate, that's the word I'm looking for, demonstrate, um, at least one layering of my base coat. So this would be the base coat number four. Um, this kit did not have a name when I purchased it, so I do not know the name, but it's a 28 inch toddler dowel and I got it off of Amazon from a Nano Reborn shop. So, um, yeah, so here we go. But basically, um, right here, I have, oh, it's mainly a whitewash paint. Um, I added in some of the textile tile and glass medium from Folk Art. Give me a second, I will grab that. But, um, this here, I don't know if you can see that. And then I added some white, and then I added in a hint of red to give it a slight pinkish color. Um, I'm keeping my color very, very pale is because um, this style is going to be used for a Halloween prop. But basically all ooh, I'm doing is adding a thin layer of paint. And I'm starting off with the back of the head. And then I'm going to take my sponge and dab it into this water just to get it extra moist because like I said, I was having issues with um, my paint being too thick and I was getting lines. So I found by at least um, dipping it in the water, it helped thin out my paint even more. I mean, it was getting lines everywhere and it was chalky looking and I went through and managed to fix a lot of it. Um, some of it did not come undone. If you find that you're getting too much paint on your sponge, just go ahead and dab it. But, um, so yeah, I was getting really frustrated yesterday because this was really my first time working with air dries. I have worked with um, the heat set paints. I've only worked with those four times, so I, um, I'm not a doll artist, but I figured I would at least share my experience and mishaps with you guys and some of my success. But basically, um, as far as reborn dolls, I was introduced to it like 10 years ago, and 10 years ago, I did a total of three, but then I walked away from it because I just, you know, one, I had a boy and the only person who had girls was my cousin, so I, I made a doll for each of her daughters. Actually, her one daughter ended up with two of them because uh, I had her a lot, so she got a little bit more from me than the other child. Shh, don't tell anybody. But, um... So basically all I'm doing here, but um, anyway, so I, I made three like nine, ten years ago and I used the Genesis heat set and I really enjoyed it, but like I said, I didn't have grandkids and I had a son and so there was no need for me to really continue doing baby dolls. So I just found other hobbies. Um, over the summer months, my husband somehow re-sparked my interest in the reborn doll world, mainly because um, he's setting up Halloween props in our backyard. 
for the kids, which we don't have grandkids, but um, my cousin's kids come over all the time, so we kind of treat them like they're our grandkids, but technically they are not. But um, they come over at least once a month, and we try to find fun things to do with the kids because our son is now 24, and he doesn't have any kids. And my stepdaughter, she doesn't have kids, and I think she's 20. I think she just turned 28. But she doesn't have kids, so, you know, I have to steal my cousin's kids just to have fun with kids. But anyway, I know that doesn't sound good, but... Um, I don't know if I'm liking that. But you just want to make sure your paint's thin. And yesterday when I was trying to dab, I was leaving, like, marks from this thing all over the place. It, it, I mean, it was horrible. But um, I wanted to try the air dry method because this dowel is going to be used for a Halloween prop. So I didn't want to... Uh, it's going to be outside, so I didn't want a dowel that was going to be outside. And... and my understanding is the air dry method goes a little bit faster than Genesis and it's already October, no, I got a day or two before October, but um, basically what I'm doing here is getting behind the ears and creases, so hopefully it avoids a paint buildup. Um, I mean, you'll get, a, you shouldn't, but sometimes you do if you're not careful because the to me, working with this air dry is a lot different than Genesis, but maybe it's just because I don't have the knowledge yet. I mean, it's the same concept, but different. I may not know, even know what I'm talking about, but... But what you want to do in any of the creases, you want to try to avoid any, like, excessive paint buildup. And that's what I'm trying to eliminate here. But um, a month ago, I I did my first reborn doll in like nine ten years, and uh, it ended up being tinky. And I used Genesis, and I have to say, I really love the results for not doing one in ten years. And then, this, so this is my second attempt on a reborn in 10 years, but I wanted to at least give this method an, a try. And like I said, this one's going to be a Halloween prop. So I'm not expecting this to be a beautiful child when I'm done. <laughs> so even though I wasn't getting the results I wanted yesterday, I was still just going to let it slide because I believe this dowel is going to be 90% covered with clothes. I mean, the only thing that's really going to be sticking out is its face, if I'm understanding correctly. But, um, so I wasn't overly concerned when I was having those issues yesterday. However, I told the kids that they could do a reborn doll and I haven't decided if I'm letting them do the air dry or if I'm letting them do the Genesis. And I at least need it to correct any mistakes that I may have in order to properly tell them because um, the kids that I'm allowing, allowing to do this, their ages are, uh, well, one's going to be seven here in October, so he'll be seven, and then one just turned nine, and then the other just turned 12. So I'm dealing with two girls and one boy. If you see, there's like a little bit of a buildup right there. I'm just going to try to dab it out a little bit better. Okay. But I started with the back of the head, and now I'm going to move to the... Ace. I hope you can see that okay. But yeah, yesterday I was just getting mad and frustrated. 
And I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. Oh my gosh. This is stupid. I don't like this. But I think in the end it's going to be fine. You just got to be patient. And I knew not to have my paint thick, but for some reason it was thick. And I just kept adding more distilled water to it. Uh, it actually got my container so full that this was overflowing. I probably should have put it in a bigger container because apparently I had too much paint in it. But now that I'm dipping my sponge in the water, that seems to be helping. But every time I finished a leg or an arm, I'd add more water. And it was to the point where my container was overflowing, so... I mean, I knew where my issue was. Oh, look, I didn't even see that I had this going on up here. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh my gosh, help me. But yeah, I'm not a doll artist. And I figured as an amateur, because if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're not a professional, you can at least learn from my mistakes and I will tell you, don't make your paint too thick. And it helps to have the sponge wet. And this is for the air dry. Now, heat set is totally, it's, it's similar, but, but different. I mean, I guess you can saturate that in paint thinner, but I didn't find the need to do that while I was working with the heat set. But um, yeah, this guy is really, really pale. I decided not to neutralize it because, um, and I just wanted to do base coat because um, my understanding is I'm supposed to be making some sort of corpse dowel. So I want it to start off with pretty much as white of a base as possible. And then I'll slowly start enhancing some color, but the base color I was supposed to think somewhat of a corpse, so I figured I would get to that color easier if I start off with a lighter base coat than adding in a neutralizing color like blue green or I forget the other color. I don't know. So basically, I'm creating a white canvas or slightly off-white canvas to start my painting, and this is the first fourth 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 layer and like I said I did run into issues with some chalkiness and unevenness and most of that was mainly because my paint wasn't thin enough so um, this is probably the last coat I'm gonna put on and then I will go ahead and start working on some veining and possibly creasing and shadowing and then maybe modeling. But I'm not sure if that's the order I'm gonna go yet. I'll know once I get to that point. But um, for now, I got this a lot more even than it was yesterday. Yesterday I was ready to toss it in the trash. And my, again, my advice is keep the paint thin. I mean, you want it so thin that it's basically translucent when you're adding it and you're, you're gonna be thinking, oh, I'm not adding color, I'm not adding color. But as you see, this is my fourth layer and there is a color difference between that and the face. I'm hoping you can see that on camera. Hoping, can you, can you? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, that's all I really have to share here. If you notice, I got a little bit of buildup right there. Yeah, check those creases. But um, yeah, just double check those creases. Make sure you don't have too much of a buildup. Just blot it out with a smaller paintbrush. And then just go back through and hit it with your little dabber. And this is it. Okay, you guys, I am back. Um, here, 
I am going to start creasing. However, when I was doing the arms and the legs, I found that not only was I creasing, but I found myself kind of blushing the dowel at the same time. So I don't know if I'm going to continue blushing because I know that's an after step after you do a flush, flush tone and whatnot, but that's what my brain told me to do at that particular time. Um, you see here I got this purplish kind of reddish color. Um, this paint is actually left over from the kids painting and I figured it was close enough. I know it has purple in it. I know it has red. It might have a little bit of black. It's got the distilled water and then it's also got the um, glass and tile medium in it. So um, we're going to work on some creasing which this dowel doesn't seem to have too many facial creasing so I'll probably find myself blushing once again but we will see what happens while I'm working on this so here we go and again I am limited on brushes and stuff because like I said I don't do this and um, I have all the good ones in with the Genesis paint so um, any paint that I'm using is um, that is weird. I swear when I was working, it seems like a completely different color. No. But, um, I don't know. This looks more pink to me now all of a sudden. When I was working on the legs and stuff, it was looking red. But now that I switched to the face, it's looking more pink to me. So, we're just going to wing it here. Um, if you find me quiet, that's, that's probably better. That way I'm just not rambling off about stupid stuff. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I, I have a thing of water here too because I'm finding the waters helping me. Oh, I don't want to do it. This is looking pink to me. It didn't look pink to me before. Okay, just keep going with it. We will create something. This will either be a disaster or it won't. Um, but you know what? The, the paint seems a little bit more chalkier in this area. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Because I'm not an artist. I'm an amp. Look at that. Okay, that was not planned, but we're going with it since it's there. So apparently we're going to take and do it with the other eye. I'm doing whatever this doll tells me to do. If it's telling me that it needs blood red eyes, then I guess it needs blood red eyes. There it goes, there it goes. But I found myself... Yeah, I was originally just going to do creasing and then next thing I know I'm like doing a combination of creasing and, and blushing and... And it seems like every time I put paint on this paintbrush, I'm getting different colors from it because, I don't know, there for a while I was getting more of a reddish tint and then I was getting like a brownish purple. But it might be because of a million colors in here because I don't honestly know what colors are in here because I just, we were painting with the kids and I just took all their paint and just put it in one container because, um... I just did. Look at his black eyes. Oops, can you see it? His black eyes. Hers. His, hers. Again, I think I know what this is going to be when I'm done, but I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, look at those eyes. Raw. But yeah, if you're, you're following me or if you're watching this for advice and techniques, um, don't do that. Just watch it. Maybe I, I'll humor you. And um, 
Yeah, see, I'm finding myself doing more blushing than... That's fine, though. And I haven't even put on a skin tone. But... Who knows what this doll is going to be when I'm done. Because I just keep adding and adding and adding and... Oh my goodness. See, now that's like wicked mauve to me. And see, I don't like my creases to be like... Like that. Some people get carried away on those creases. But apparently I get carried away on other things, so... It's like I put it on, I wipe it off. I put it on, I wipe it off. I mean, I want a crease there, but I don't want it like super, super thick. And I know a lot of it's going to get covered because I haven't even done the... Look at that. <laughs> it's like, hi, how are you? I got a mouth on top of a mouth. Mouth? Mouth. Mouth? Yeah. So apparently this... Dell has some issues. It doesn't even want to stay there. There we go. Anyway. But yeah, I, I still have to do uh, modeling. Is that what it's called? But I'm finding... And this, this to me, should be a little bit more on the purple side. And it's more on the red side. So... Um, If you're watching this, I don't expect this to be... I might try to make another purple. Like I said, I'm limited on colors because I figure, well, I got a purple. I can make it work. But my purple isn't very purple. So I might go back in with a purple purple. And... Um, He's turning too red. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the ears. Yeah. You having fun yet? Am I killing you? Like, oh my gosh, this girl just needs to stop. Tell her to stop. Look at that. We're getting some color behind those ears. And... Um, get in there. Get in there. Oh my gosh. This girl is insane. Look at that. Look at that. I'm bleeding. Help. Yeah, the key to me was to keep the sponge wet. Or, I don't know if it's the key to me, but it's helping me. I think. Maybe it's not. Because I don't feel like I'm creasing at all. I don't even know if I've gotten into a crease because I keep dabbing everything out. You know what I mean? Yeah. What she said. So, what's your name? Oh, yeah? Oh, we got some color going on there. Don't know if it was the color I was going for. Because originally I thought I was using purple, but it's looking pretty red and pretty hideous, don't you think? Could you imagine if this was supposed to be a pretty baby? It's not even a baby, technically. It's a toddler. You know. A toddler. Stop it. Okay, I find myself getting weird because I don't feel like I'm doing this right. But, um, bear with me. I mean, if I put everything in, you know. As long as I blend it a Eventually, I think it'll work out. We've got some deep ears, kiddo. She's 
Just call me Nathan Jill. Get in there. Okay. All this brush seems to be doing is creating like an additional like little puddle. It doesn't seem like it's dabbing dry. There it goes. Took a couple of tries. <laughs> he is red. That's okay. Um, what am I doing? Oh my gosh. Lord help me. Help me. Um, so I'm creating a crease back here that doesn't really exist. So in a sense, I guess it's going to be like a neck shadow. Because that's what this doll is telling me to do. Have you ever had a doll talk to you and tell you what to do? And like I said, I shouldn't even be at this stage because I haven't done so much yet. This is a step like that's like, what, four steps away, maybe five? Oh, it's not picking up color there. Can you see that? I can hear ba ba ba. But yeah, I was going to do creases and I'm finding myself doing more blushing than creasing. And I haven't even put on the uh, skin tone. So, it might be okay. I mean, if worse comes to worse and I don't like the doll at the end, I just won't post this video, right? But maybe I will just to like humor you, humor me and Humor the dog next door. I don't know. I don't know. I don't don't know. Look at you got tiny ears. I just did Tinky and Tinky had those big beautiful ears. Oh, he was so pretty. He's like I was so excited when I got him and worked on him. But um I actually bought another one to work on. Because he needs a friend. Yes. 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 I'm sitting here talking to myself like you guys are listening. Yeah. Uh, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Where else do we need? I'm not getting the creases at all. I'm just sloppy. There we go. Let's go. Am I in good view? Okay. Um, yeah, I'll probably make another color of purple or I don't know. This color is not horrible, but I was expecting a little bit more of a purplish color. How's he looking? Rawr. He's just so red. Okay, where else should I put red? I mean, I may as well keep going with it because heck. Um, so when I add blush to its cheeks, I don't know how much is going to stand out, but it's a corpse doll, so it's not supposed to. Um, what do you think? Like... Because obviously I'm definitely not quite working on creases, so, but something's telling me to hit this area somewhere. Um, up the center? Maybe? I don't know. I'm not even supposed to be at the stage because this is a blushing stage. I'm going to water this down though. Okay, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Yeah, so I haven't even done blushing or or the, what's it called, modeling stuff yet. So, um, I don't even know if those features are now come through, but, um, I'm just going to keep going with it because I'm just going to keep going with it. So my doll is turning, like, super, super red. 
and that was not what I was intending to do. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know what I was thinking. What am I thinking? Look at that. Anyway. Well, anyway. This was supposed to be me showing you how to do creases, but as you th see, I think I'm failing. And here comes my husband, so I'll be quiet. Hey, Chubby. What you doing, Jerry? I am. I'm supposed to be working on creasing, but um, I'm finding myself blushing and kind of skipped the whole creasing thing. Look, look how red he is. Okay, I'm going to turn off the camera so I don't torture you too much more, but that's not really creasing. It was more of a blushing, and you'll probably see me do this again, so um, I might play with them a little bit more. I may not. We'll see. Bye-bye. Hi. I'm back. Um, here's what my doll's looking like. As you notice, I was laughing because I started to blush and I had no intention of blushing in my last uh, little skit. But um, now I'm gonna try some modeling. And um, instead of doing like the traditional blue, red, and some people use yellow, some people use green, I decided to go with a, um, a darkened, almost grayish, I don't know, it's, it's a purple, with a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, but with a hint of black in it, because basically I need to stop the blood flow on this dowel, so I'm not gonna do the red. And since the purple has a little bit of red and blue in it, um, that's gonna be the combination of my red and blues. But I want it to get like the bloat effect, so after I get done with the purple, I'm going to probably do a shade of green and a shade of yellow. And I hope that gives me what I'm kind of going for. Like I said, this is my first time using the air dries and, um, and I haven't done a corpse style before, not from like a reborn type thing. So, um, what I have here is a sponge and I have cut out various sections of the sponge to kind of give me a pattern. And I, like I said, it's a, it's a hint of red, a hint of purple, a hint of blue, a hint of black in the color I'm using. Again, um, I started off, I forgot to wet my sponge, so when I was doing the arms and legs, there's part of it where the, the paint's like really like purple, purple. And then there's one where I forgot to after I dipped my sponge in water, I forgot to squeeze out the excess, and then I had uh, uh, paint running everywhere. So um, I already wet down my sponge, and then I'm just going to take a brush, dip it into the paint, and just dab it on. And then I'm going to hit my block a few times. I mean, that's almost like a, a grayish purple right there. But I'm going to lightly just start making little motions. 
I found if you press too hard, then you're not going to get the design of, I guess, broken vessels. I don't know what it would be. But you know how sometimes when you look at your skin and it's kind of blotchy looking? That's kind of what you're creating here. Um, I'll show you what I'm doing with my purple. And then um, I'm not going to go on camera and do the yellow or the green, but you will see the results. See, some of that's coming in really dark, but then again, this baby is decomposing. So I'm thinking it'll be okay. To me, I feel like I'm making like a snake or a lizard type baby. And who knows, maybe that's what it'd be. As, as don't know. But try not to pounce the same area twice because you want to try to get the, the blotchiness look. And just kind of rotate your sponge as you're doing it. Like, woo, woo, woo. I don't know. You can sing like a little song. But I'm not a singer, so don't expect me to sing. Yeah. Do you see what I got going on there? It's really ugly. It's kind of, it's really ugly. Very ugly. Anyway. But you just keep doing that. And it seems like the more I do it, the more the color is going to fade. So I don't know if I'm going to add more color to my sponge or not. Kind of get behind those ears a little bit. Um, I'll go ahead and dab it one more time. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting it back into the water, my sponge, and I just squeezed out the excess water, and then I'm taking my paintbrush and dabbing it into the paint. I know you can't see it, but I'm dabbing it into the paint, and then I dab my sponge. I mean, this isn't a pretty color at all. And then we'll start at the top of the head. You see how that's a little bit darker than what I have up there, but that'll be fine. Because I'm guessing when you decompose, I mean it's, I don't know, I haven't decomposed yet, so. But the fact that I put that little bit of red in the face shows that this doll has a little bit of life because obviously it's going to be standing up because it's a toddler. I don't think I'm... Well, we might lay it down. I don't know what we're doing with it yet. Yeah, make sure you kind of rotate that way you don't get the boom, boom, boom in the same. Because if you go like this, you'll just end up with like lines. So just rotate your sponge slightly. And don't press too hard. And actually, my paint's kind of on the dark side, but hopefully by the time I add the green, the yellow, and then another uh, flush tone, which it, mine won't be like a flush, flush tone, but we're going to call it a flush tone. I haven't decided which color I'm going with that, but as you see, I started off this dowel basically almost white, and I just keep adding a little bit of color. But I'm thinking if I add the green and the yellow, I'll get almost like a bloat type thing. Um, I guess if I add a little bit of black, that would start, what, the decay. And then I can always chop on fingers and use some Homer clay to make uh, bones if I want. But I don't think I'm going to do that. I've worked with Palmer clay a little bit, so. But... So anyway, that's basically what I'm doing here. Um, I'm going to do the same, like I said, with possibly yellow and green. If I change my mind, I will let you know once I turn back on my camera, but that's what I have right now. He's looking pretty ugly, but it's a horror doll, so I didn't expect him to be pretty. Thank you again. Um, 
I think when I get back with you next, I will possibly be adding in a layer of skin. If I remember correctly, if I don't put in skin, I might go back and do some more shading just to give some more like under the skin kind of depth going on with the doll and I'll possibly be doing it in the shade of purple. But um, yeah, so that's it for now. Again, thank you for your time. Okay, I am back. I had did the modeling. I did a layer of the purple a layer of yellow and a layer of green and as you can see this guy is looking pretty ugly right now so what I'm getting ready to do is um, I'm gonna start adding on flush layers I'll be putting on anywhere from I'm gonna say three to four layers just to tone this down a bit but remember I was exaggerating a lot of the undertones to give it a more morbid type look. Um, basically for the flesh tone, what I'm doing is using what I used for my base coat, but then I added some gray into it, and then I added some more of the textile medium, and of course the distilled water. So if you guys are ready to get started, welcome to my horror doll. No. If I was doing a pretty baby, there's no way I would allow all this to be as dark as this is, but here we go. Again, I'm just swishing around my paint to make sure it's nice and mixed. Taking off any excess. I'm dipping my sponge into my thing of water, that way it's nice and wet. And we're gonna get started. And again, I'm just showing you what I'm doing with the head. I pretty much doing the same thing with the ooh, that's look how thick that is you don't want it that thick so I'm just gonna keep brushing it and thin it out a little bit so yeah that's kind of on the thick side but we're gonna take this handy dandy little guy and just start blotting it off in a center kind of wasting a lot of paint but you don't want to end up with a thick painted doll that ends up kind of chalky looking. So basically you paint on and blot off. And it helps if the sponge is wet. Because when it wasn't wet it was leaving little indents from the sponge. Okay, woo, look at that. I'm so pretty. So, so pretty. Yeah, no? Pretty, pretty. And drippy, drippy. Okay, let's get the drips. Okay. I am applying a lot of paint here, but I'm also taking off a lot of the paint. Um, for the, the creases, take a smaller brush and just get in there and pounce away. That way you don't get like thick, chalky buildups of paint. So any of the nooks and crannies, just go in there and blot them out. See how you got like a crease there? Just blot it out. There we go. See? 
I don't know why, but there looks like there's some orange there, and I don't know. Well, maybe that comes off. That comes off. I don't know what that was. <laughs> okay, we're going to get some of the air now, or all of the air. behind the ear, then I'm going to go inside the ear, and I'm just going to take this guy and start blotting off as much as possible. Now that I'm in the air, you gotta watch any kind of buildup. So again, I'm going to take my little brush and blot some more. That way I don't get too much of a buildup inside the ears and around the ears. And as I start to put on multiple layers, cause like I said, I'll probably put on like three to four layers of this. Um, it will tone down some of the greens and purples a little bit, but I also still want them showing through because, again, this is a corpse doll, not a pretty doll. I don't know how the professionals or the experts do it, but this is how we're doing it. water before I start my next because look how milky it is already and that's from doing the arms and the legs if I don't feel like I'm gray enough I, I might add a little bit more gray to my my mixture here but for now I'm just trying to tone down the greens and the purples Or make it look more blended. Blended. I don't know. There's some build up in there that I'm trying to get. Somewhere I had another little dabber, but I don't know what happened to it. So I'm going to use the other end, try to get in there a little bit better. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know if you can see the slight difference between what I've hit and what I haven't hit. See, I hit this area, but I haven't hit this area. I don't know if you can see that or not. But it helped tone it down a little bit. And like I said, by the time I add two to three more layers, it should soften it a little bit, or a lot, or not at all. Obviously, you're not going to leave the doll there because you have all these uh, little... I also texturize this, too. I don't know if you can see how jagged it is. Instead of leaving it um, just flat. Because then it adds a little bit of, I guess, skin texture to it. Because you know how your skin's not, like, smooth, smooth.
So anyway, I'm going to finish up the head. Um, I'm going to finish blotting here. And then I'm going to go back and hit the arms and the legs and the head another two to three more times. And then um, when I get back with you, I will probably, and I don't know for sure, but I might go back through and see if the creasing's where I want to be once I tone this down a bit. If it's not where I want it to be, then I'll probably go back through and hit a few more spots. Um, I might enhance with a, either a darker gray or whatnot around the eyes. I At this point, I do not know what I'm doing. Um, let me get through the base coats of the skin tone and then I will decide once I'm there because I don't know how much of this is going to fade away and I don't know how much of this is going to stay. But this is one coat and like I said, I'm going to add another two to three. So I'll see you back in a bit. Thank you. Bye. Okay, you guys, my camera stopped working. Um, here's what I have going on right now. I'm going to go back off camera because I don't know how much you just saw and how much you didn't. And I don't know how much of my story you heard. But I'm going to go and blend that a little bit better. And then I'm going to work on detailing a little bit better. But I'm not going to keep torturing you guys with my misery. Because at this point I'm not feeling this guy. So I will post the finished result. Again, thank you for watching. And um, I'm assuming... If you're still watching, it's going to go into a small photo shoot. Bye-bye. Thank you.